Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America online, thisweekinamerica.us. The secret behind perceptions finally revealed in the highly acclaimed new book, Perceptual Intelligence, The Brain's Secret to Seeing Past Illusions, Misperception, and Self-Deception by human perception expert and highly sought-after eye surgeon, Dr. Brian boxer Wackler. Called the surgeon surgeon, as so many other surgeons worldwide visit Dr. Brian for their own eyes, including eye surgeons, brain surgeons, orthopedic surgeons, and many more. A pioneer and the world's leading authority on keratoconus, refractive surgery known for his unique and proprietary treatments, creator of the revolutionary eye bright eye whitening procedure. Devoted to the field of vision correction, he's the medical director of Boxer Wackler Institute in Beverly Hills, staff physician at Los Angeles' famed Cedars Sinai Medical Center, an unparalleled history of awards and accomplishments. Named among six noteworthy innovators in all of American medicine by a, na- a major national news network, and now author of Perceptual Intelligence, The Brain's Secret to Seeing Past Illusion, Misperception, and Self-Deception. Back with us on the program, Dr. Brian boxer Wackler. Dr. Brian, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Rick. It's a pleasure to be back. It is great to have you back on the program. Excellent reaction last time to the book, Perceptual Intelligence. And very briefly, let's talk about exactly what we're talking about with perceptual intelligence. Give us a brief definition, and then we'll uh, we'll start talking about some of the fascinating topics and real-life case studies you've got in the book. The way I think about perceptual intelligence is it's how we interpret our experiences to separate fantasy from reality. So in a way, it's like having a built-in BS detector in our head to be able to make better, smarter decisions in our life to accomplish the goals that we want. And as interesting as you'll find out in reading the book, Perceptual Intelligence, by the way, you'll find it at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, wherever books are sold around the country. And we'll give you the uh, the website and information during the course of the program. You can contact Dr. Brian directly. It's interesting Chances are we'll have a more successful life if we have a higher perceptual intelligence. Lower, we we run into some problems. And something I want to talk about, you'd mentioned after we had the last program, you were invited to speak to a group and talking about something very prominent in the news, especially in your area in in Hollywood, talking about uh, Louis C.K., Weinstein, the perception of men in power in Mm -hmm. Hollywood. And I would have loved to have been in the audience for that talk. Talk about that, because as we're looking at this, we have a perception, and then there's the reality. I'm sure that was a fascinating conversation. I've always been a very big advocate of gender equality and female empowerment. And, I mean, to the point that when I got married almost 25 years ago, my wife and I, we took each other's last name. And that's how I became Boxer Walkler. Originally, I was Brian Walkler, and she was Selena Boxer. So I've always been very... uh, strong beliefs with you know women are are equal to men and what we're seeing now and that's why i was asked to speak at this uh women's event called empower her in los angeles to a group of about 200 women uh about a month or so ago after the book came out and you know we see in the headlines it started off with the new york times story that broke uh, the Harvey Weinstein scandal yes. of how he was abusing women because of his power. And then we saw Louis C.K. next. And you know, then the list now goes on and on and on. The reason this, this is happening is because people in power, typically men, but can be women as well, um, they are admired, they're looked up to by a lot of people, and they have what is called the halo effect. And they understand this, they, they leverage this to be able to take advantage of people for what their own personal gains are in situations that normally would not be acceptable. And a lot of times you know, people go along with this, you know, the victim, so to speak, because they are taken in by that halo effect. That's who's being affected are, are the people on the other end of it as well. And so what we're now seeing in the media is this really incredible, almost expose of what's been going on, not only in Hollywood, but in a lot of other areas where people, typically men, are in power who are using their halo effect on typically women. And what's been happening, though, because there's been so much media coverage of this, women now are actually becoming very empowered in this situation because... You know, in the past, it was very frowned upon, especially in Hollywood, yes. that if you were to be a whistleblower, your career would be over because you'd be blackballed. And 
women were very afraid to make any sort of waves if you know people like this were um, coming on to them. So now, because there's so many people coming out in the media, it's really empowering women to know that if they are in a situation where someone may be using their power to take advantage or abuse them, that they now have that power to say, number one, no, and number two, to report it. And that is extremely empowering uh, for women, uh, especially. And it's, it's, even though it's not a legislative you know, victory, like the right to vote in 1920 or the Women's Married Property Acts, uh, that was like 18, I think, 69, that legally gave women an identity for men. Um, it's not that type of legislative victory, but it's a social victory that's going to be pretty up there with those other ones that I just mentioned. And it's exactly what you're talking about. The topic is perceptual intelligence. That's the name of the new book by Dr. Brian Boxer Wachler, Perceptual Intelligence, The Brain's Secret to Seeing Past Illusion, Misperception, and Self-Deception. To see before your very eyes over the course of the last three or four months, this whole perception change where now people who thought they were victims because of their perception of the system, now that perception has changed and we don't have to take this anymore. It has to be very rewarding to sit back and, and see uh, this whole collective change in perception that has now made life a whole lot better for a lot of people. It has, and it's also brought an awareness to men in these positions yes. because a lot of them are now going to think twice about taking advantage of a subordinate or a coworker in those situations now because they could be the next person that's going to end up in the headlines. And, you know, that's an improvement in their perception as well and improving their perceptual intelligence as well as, as women's uh, at the same time. I mentioned in the beginning, and talking about perceptual intelligence, if you have a high PI value, perceptual intelligence value, that it can actually help you in life. And, and there was something interesting in the book. You talk about maintaining a positive, optimistic attitude reflects high PI, perceptual intelligence, can lead you to find breakthrough medical treatments for what otherwise might seem like hopeless scenarios. You see this in your work, the case of Victoria Principal, the, the actress who came to you, Jamal Crawford, NBA player, uh, Montel Williams, who writes in, in, in the forward in the book. Talk about that, because there is a correlation between this optimism and, and perceptual intelligence that, that may get you through some difficult situations. Research has shown many times that having a positive mental outlook and being optimistic is really good for number one your health uh, what you want to achieve in life and the opposite is equally as detrimental being negative is like having a black hole in your mind and it just sucks in so much energy and really undermines what you're really trying to achieve and it's not always easy to have a positive outlook if you have for example a chronic medical problem and there seems to be no hope but by research on your own, you may even find some solutions that have been discovered even outside of, let's say, the United States or the country that you live in, that then you can bring up and talk to your doctor about. Because the reality is doctors know a lot, but they don't know everything. And that's why, for example, you mentioned Victoria Principal. She had been seen by many doc eye doctors for her chronic dry eye condition. On her own, she found out that we were doing some novel, innovative things that the other doctors didn't know about. And um, same with Jamal Crawford, you know, for having uh, brown spots on the whites of his eyes. You know, patients with that condition are typically told by their doctors, well, nothing can be done. It's from sun damage. You just have to live with it. But again, if they do their research, they'll find that we developed a procedure that can actually treat these brown pigment spots um, pretty painlessly and very effectively. So it's, those are just some examples. And we even talk about a, a woman, Chris Carr, in the book yes. who has chronic liver cancer that is untreatable. Doctors didn't give her very long to live, but with her positive mindset and some alternative treatments and healthy changes she made in her life, she's been living for years and years well beyond what doctors even expected. And she was even written up in Scientific American because she's a great example of having that positive outlook. And the book helps people get to do that and show them how to achieve that for themselves to overcome whatever obstacles they're having in their own life. And it's not just like a business it may make you a little more successful in business. We're literally talking about all aspects of one's lives, aren't we, with, when you're able to tap into your perceptual intelligence? 
Really, I mean, I just did an interview yesterday uh, with a, a podcast that's all for people about business. So this can be applied to any area in your life. And we do have business examples in the book as well um, that can help people. But like even in business, for example, you know, these are powerful tools. And like anything that's a, a powerful tool, it's up to people to ethically use them for good and, and to do that in an ethical way, especially in business, because, you know, you don't want to be taking advantage of people and using these tools for ill. Um, because they are powerful. Well, and you talk about that in one of the chapters when you talk about fanaticism, uh, the nature of extreme beliefs where this is not used in a positive way. It can be very detrimental, can be very dangerous as well. Cults, unfortunately, have this really dialed in how to take advantage of people that have low perceptual intelligence because they're in a funk in their life, usually. Um, it's typically someone who's moved to a new city or they've moved to a new school. They don't know many people, don't have many friends, feeling very alone. This is the prime type of person who cults will prey on, and they know what to do. They know how to give them unconditional love, to welcome them into their social settings. And the thing is, cults never say, like with the big banner, hey, we're a cult, come to our you know, dinner gathering on Thursday night. Yes. They will never <laughs> say that. And so it, people become blind to what is happening slowly, and that's why there's a very careful brainwashing that occurs with cults. And you can, even if you have children, you know, everybody at some point potentially is vulnerable. And it just cults aren't in the headlines these days, just the way opioid addiction and deaths weren't in the headlines uh, a year ago, the way they are now. But it was, it's been occurring and has been occurring, and cults are the same way, even though they're not in the headlines, but they're still very pervasive. We're talking about the new book, Perceptual Intelligence, The Brain's Secret to Seeing Past Illusion, Misperception, and Self-Deception. Back with us on the program, the author, Dr. Brian boxer Walkler. There's not necessarily a correlation, is there, between intelligence and perceptual intelligence? A really interesting chapter in the book, and there are so many, is called A Million Suckers Are Born Every Nanosecond. We've got some of the brightest minds in the country, people that have fame, fortune, and all of a sudden Bernie Madoff walks into their lives and the perception is this guy is incredibly successful. They almost blindly hand over money to him, don't they? They do, and you know this is a real example of something that violates what I consider the purpose of life for all of us. And I, I wrote a Huffington Post article two years ago about that, showing through logical analysis why I believe and argue in the article what the purpose of life is versus just the assertion. But when somebody like this is taking advantage of people for pure greed, um, it's, it's just a, a very evil trait, um, ruining people's lives. People trusted him with their retirement who weren't famous and high earning celebrities and lost it all in his Ponzi scheme. You know, the, the unethical aspect of this is just unfathomable because, you know, I believe really strongly, like I mentioned in the article, that, you know, the purpose of life is to do good and to minimize suffering for people. And that's what the article is about. And when I see something like this, it's just, it breaks my heart to see people that just, for whatever pathological reason in their psychology, you know, do these things and abuse their power and abuse the trust that people have put in them. So that's why the book is so powerful because it can help make people bulletproof to falling prey to people like this in their business dealings or other areas in their life. You know, it's interesting because the perception of Bernie Madoff was so strong. You talk about it in the book, Perceptual Intelligence. Maybe he even started believing this and was kidding himself, thinking that he was doing some good because he was giving a little bit of money to charity after taking so much away from and losing a lot of money from a, a number of prominent charities that, that he was involved in. So he almost started buying into the, this myth himself, didn't he? It, it probably. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be because everybody is, of course, you know, throwing accolades at him. Um, he can do no wrong in people's eyes. And but underneath it was really a bad person. And, you know, he himself had distorted perceptions of himself, therefore, and had low perceptual intelligence about himself. 
How do we raise our perceptual intelligence level? I talk about high, I talk about low. You say it's basically an acquired skill. Talk about that. If somebody's watching going, you know, I need to be a little more cautious and maybe trust my intuition a little bit more rather than this fantasy that somebody has created around them. How do we go about developing that? Well, what we've been talking about so far, Rick, is the critical thinking skills part of the the spectrum of yes perceptual intelligence. What you've now brought up is the other side, which is the intuition side of perceptual intelligence, which is almost the opposite of critical thinking. You're going with these gut feelings that come to you that may not have any rational reason behind them, but you're, you're having some message, whether it's your subconscious that's giving it to you or you're getting it from some other outside energy source that's putting it in your head. But research also shows that these intuitive feelings are things that people should be listening to, not just discount. And it doesn't mean to follow every intuitive gut feeling you have, but at least to take a moment to think about it, analyze it, and most often going with that type of uh, direction that you're being given by your intuition is going to be the right way to go. A couple minutes left in the program. For you, you almost could say it was life-saving. Let's go back to you're on the debate team at UCLA. You're traveling. Set up the story because you make a decision, sort of a gut feeling. A few seconds later, it might have saved your life. I've always been, I guess, even as a young child, I, I had a sense of my intuition, which was a little different probably than most you know, my friends at that age. But when I was in college, we were coming back from a debate tournament in Northern California, and we were in a, a station wagon that was donated by an alumnus, and we're all packed in, we're speeding down the freeway, and I usually wear my seatbelt, but because we're all packed in and the seatbelts were, you know, at least mine was, you know, smushed between the seats, Yes, I was like, it's just, you know, too much hassle to try to find it. But into the, into the ride, um, I just had this feeling of, you know, go get that seatbelt, like go dig it out. It's a pain, but put on your seatbelt. So I, you know, fished them out, finally clicked them. Literally, uh, no more than about 30 seconds later, a tire blew. And the whole station wagon started spinning around uncontrollably. And it didn't flip, but it did go off into a ditch. Had I not worn that seatbelt, at the minimum, I would have been spun around like loose change in a dryer. At the worst, I would have been ejected from the window and you know, who knows what at that point. So but that's just an example of going with the gut feeling. And, um, and research shows that your gut feelings are pointing you in a direction for a reason. Examples like that in the book, Perceptual Intelligence, The Brain's Secret to Seeing Past Illusion, Misperception, and Self-Deception. Our guest on the program, the author, Dr. Brian boxer Wackler. I might mention introduced, the two of us were introduced by a mutual friend, the uh, international holistic uh, expert and author, Dr. Susan Smith-Jones, who said uh, in a review on Amazon, and the reviews on Amazon are, are excellent all across the board, a book that will enrich the quality of your life. This has to be rewarding when you write something like that and you're seeing where your words, your, your your thoughts, your book has really changed the quality of life for people. That's the reason why I became a doctor, right, was to help people. And I help people in my very specialized way with people with keratoconus or the other conditions you mentioned. But also I wrote the book to help people beyond just what I do in my practice as a doctor. And that's really, again, going back to what our purpose, my, I believe our purpose in life is, is to help people and to do good. And it's just a continuation expansion of, of what I believe I'm here to do. And in the book, you'll also find a perceptual intelligence assessment. You can take a series of questions at the end of the book, get some idea where you stand on this, and clues throughout the book on what you, you should be looking at. You can increase that perceptual intelligence. Back with us once again, Dr. Brian boxer Wackler. This is part two. Hopefully, we'll have Dr. Brian back with us. The book is Perceptual Intelligence, The Brain Sacred to Seeing Past Illusion, Misperception, and Self-Deception. Dr. Brian, it is always a pleasure. Time goes by way too quickly. Thank you so much once again for being with us on the program. Program. You're welcome. And if I can make one mention, you brought up that self-assessment. Yes. And the reason why I put that in there is because when people read books, I mean, there's lots of great books out there, but usually the information at the end, you're sort of just left with, okay, now how do I incorporate it? Or how, exactly. What, how do I? Yes. So we put the assessment in there because then it can help ingrain people to make these principles that they'll learn in the book habit and actually be able to execute it in their life. And that's why we have that, which is really a powerful part of the book. 
One of the qualities that I find so fascinating with the book, the fact that at the end you sort of tie it all together, so it's like, okay, I've got all of this information, now what do I do with it? Well, you sort of take us by the hand and say, okay, we've got this information, here's what you do with it to make your life better. Perceptual Intelligence, the book. The website is perceptualintelligence.com. You can link on our website thisweekinamerica.us and go directly to Dr. Brian's website, book available, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, wherever books are sold. Once again, Dr. Brian, thank you for being with us on the program. Look forward to having you back with us. It's a pleasure, Rick. Have You're, a great rest of the day. Thank you. You're listening to This Week in America online, thisweekinamerica.us, and we're back after these messages.